or your beach tree. Hello, beach tree. Okay, actually, it's on beach four. <clears throat> I go for a few chanting and lighting to the Buddha, the Dharma, the Sangha, by my accumulations of practice, giving so forth. May I become a Buddha to bend flows and human beings. I go for a few chanting and lighting to the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha, by my accumulations of practice, of giving so forth. May I become a Buddha to bend flows and human beings. I go for a few chanting and lighting to the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha. By my accumulations through practice of giving and so forth, may I become a Buddha to bend all sentient beings. Sanjya Jodha Zoghe Jonanda Chanjo Bardo Dane Gyapso Che Tage Chin So Ke Be Tsonan Yola Benjire Sanjya Jodha Sho Okay, some of you may be wondering to know the, the meaning of this, uh, the Tibetan verse. Um, I'll quickly explain this. <coughs> Sangye is the Buddha. Sangye is Buddha. Chu is Dharma. Tang is and. Chok ki chok together. Chok ki chok is the supreme of the community. Supreme of the gathering. Supreme of the community. Referring to Sangha. Chok ki chok. Nam la is to these. Nam la is to these. Changjuk is enlightenment. Pardu is till that point, until enlightenment. Chanju Pardu. Da, da is self, I. Ni is the linking word. Gyapsu Chi. Gyapsu Chi is go for refuge. I go for refuge until enlightenment. Da ki, again, da is the self, I. Ki is again the linking, linking word. And Jin. Jin is generosity. The practice of generosity. Jin is uh, the um, jimpa. Song is etc. etc. Kiba. Kiba is done. Done. What I, that I engaged in, that I did. Uh, generosity and so forth. Tsong uh, namgi. Tsong is the accumulation. Namgi is these. Tsong namgi. These accumulations, these accumulations of generosity and so forth. Do, do, la. Do is sentient beings. <coughs> Migrators or sentient beings. La is the linking word, is the two. Two. A pen chir, to benefit. Pen is benefit. Chir is for the sake of benefiting. Chir is for the sake of. Pen is benefit. Chir. Sangye is Buddha, Dupa is accomplish, attain, Shog is may, may I attain Buddhahood to benefit the sentient beings. Okay, we we'll say this again uh, two times. Sangye Jodha Swage Chonam Na Chanju Bhadu Dane Kyapsuch Tage Jin Swage Me Tsonan Ge Dola Benge Sangye Ju Barai Shum Sangye Jodha Swage Chonam Na Chanju Bhadu Jin Swage Me Tsonan Ge Dola Benge Sangye Ju Barai Shum Sangye Jodha Swage Chonam Na Chanju Bardu Dane Gyapsu Che Tage Chin So Ke Be Tsonan Dola Pengir Sangye Du Barai Shu Om Ye Dharma He Tu Prabhavam He Tu Te Jam Datha Gato Yavatat Tesham chayo niroda evam vati mahashramana yeswaha Om ye dharama prabhavam hetum tesham dathagato yavatat Desham chayo niroda 
Evambati Mahashramanaya Swaha Om Yedharama Heto Prabhavam Heto Tesham Dathagato Yavatat Tesham Chayo Nirodha Evam Vati Mahashramanaya Swaha all phenomena arise from causes. The causes are taught by the Tathagata. The cessation of causes as well is taught by the great seer. Deyata om gati gati paragati parasamgati bodhiswa Om Gati Gati Paragati Parasam Gati Bodhiswatyata Om Gati Gati Paragati Parasamgate Bodhiswaha <clears throat> Okay, uh, we are talking about the um, the first uh, seal that all composite things are impermanent and impermanence um, is of two kinds, the gross and the subtle. And the gross one is the impermanent phenomena, whose continuum terminates, whose continuum comes to an end. For example, say the, the beautiful sunset and the spring. Now we are heading towards autumn. The spring is coming to an end. And uh, your youth comes to an end, where the Buddha taught that whatever gathers will disperse, whatever the whatever is born will die. It's accumulated is the uh, is what exhausts. Um, this is the reality of life. And uh, at the same time, uh, we should be courageous enough to face the to know the reality in advance. And His Holiness, the Dalai Lama, very clearly indicates that. Um, but in fact, only impermanence. If the, of course, there's a great purpose benefit there. If the, if there's no benefit, then there's no point in meditating on impermanence, on the suffering nature. But there is a great benefit there. And uh, in this line, in line with this, I remember when I was in Cambridge in England, 2003, when most of you must be toddlers. Pinsoli. Toddler, 16 years ago. Ah, yes. Okay, so most of you, some of you may be not even born yet. Okay, so at that time what happened was that the, um, I had a friend and um, an extremely decent gentleman. And what he, um, Somehow we become friends. Do we become friends through his very small son, little son? And um, then he, one time, he invited me to his place for a meal, and he asked me, Dorji, tell me something about Buddhism. And not that he's interested in Buddhism, simply because that we are friends and just to make each other feel comfortable. And I started talking about the. The, the Buddhism that they're starting with suffering. <laughs> totally inexperience. Just coming out of the Tibetan ghetto, in the, the monastic ghetto there. From there I came out and I started with the, the suffering. Totally inexperience. 
And he said, he listened to me very patient for a few, two or three minutes. And he said, Dorji, stop. I said, what happened? He said that in the West, don't teach suffering. <laughs> Nobody wants to hear this. And he said that, believe it or not, in Cambridge, in the Cambridge city, they call it what, city centre. But have we seen anybody, anyone from Cambridge, England? No one. At the city centre, there were accidents happening. Once in a while, accidents happen, and then the, the people, injury, these things happen. The car accidents happen. And no, no doubt, blood comes from the, the road. But believe it or not, within 10 minutes, you won't even, you come after the 10 minutes, you don't even see a trace in the air. Everybody is scared of death. This is what he said. <clears throat> and I like, quite agree with him. So whereas, um, the, say, this culture, this culture meaning the culture of Buddhism, here, we courageously, deliberately, we think about impermanence. We think about the suffering. Uh, the, as the soul indicated, there's a great purpose there. That finally, that nobody wants to go through these, the, the shocking experience, tragic experience of acute pain and sudden news that they, they, you are ter suffering from terminal illness and so forth. We should be well prepared of ahead of time, and also that the there is a concept of the rebirth, and from what we are going to learn over the next a few days, and the rebirth concept is there, which is all, which also plays a very important role, and um, in this connection, that the reflect on impermanence, um, that has a great meaning indeed. So people, um, they who hear about these realities we can see that they're more resilient in the mind and they, they can i say they tackle the life's challenges more easily and of course with the greater meaning of life the after life after the death a great purpose can be accomplished out of this reflection so on the there is what is the, the impermanence. One is the, the the gross impermanence, where the the continuum of the impermanent phenomena comes to an end or gets terminated. Number one. Then number two, that the reality of our life that our life is our life is impermanent. That's for sure. And the one day it'll come to an end. And whether we like it or not, in the, the hundred years from now. Or 150 years from now, or let's say 150 years from now, the almost like 8 billion human beings today, not even a single person will be left then, that's for sure. Right? We can talk about, oh, there's some Rishi, some Isain there who, you know, he lived for 200 years, 300 years. We can never see that. We never see that. Right? We, we heard about these stories, but we never heard. We never. They, they, they saw such people there. The reality is that in 200 years, the 8 billion human beings today, they will all disappear. That's for sure. That's for sure. So, and uh, so with this in mind, then the um, same reflect, reflect on the impermanence of the, the death, number one. Number two, that the uncertainty of the time of death, number two. There's also to be reflected upon. One is the certainty of the death, impermanence of death, which means that one day I will leave this world. Number two, that uncertainty of the time of the death. When will when this will happen? I'm not sure. Today, tomorrow, after ten years, twenty years, we never know. So uh, these two things, of course, for for us, for those of us who came from a very different, say, the cultural background, where these things are never taught about. Um, the, it can be a little, I say, quite scary for you to hear these things, but uh, the, if you see the broader picture of the reality of what the whole samsara is, 
and then you will see that this is really very meaningful and and the the, the next point is all composite things seem permanent all contaminated things are suffering nature then the th number what is the number three everything or all phenomena is the nature of emptiness selflessness then what is next transcending sorrow is absolute peace only by understanding the first three points then we can uh, expect to understand number four transcending sorrow where you don't you don't run away from the sorrow but you transcend sorrow it's very different let's say shirking the the sufferings shirking the sufferings that is simply running away from the, the suffering you cannot run away from suffering altogether so what should we do we should transcend sorrow transcend sorrow where the sorrow cannot say the take a grip of you the, the sorrow cannot really say the uh, torture you torment you so that is what we should be doing we should transcend sorrow and of course how to transcend sorrow this is to be discussed whereas this is not really discussed in the many of the cultures how the sorrow is transcended and the two logically logical explanation not through just blind faith that you believe in me and then they, you will be liberated you will be uh, taken away from, you will transcend sorrow it's not like this that you will rationally learn logically you learn how the transcendence, transcendence of sorrow happens and if that happens this is so precious for us everybody whether you are asian or non-asian it doesn't matter everybody is seeking to run away from the, the fears of life to stay away from fears of life if possible to transcend it altogether and if there is a possibility why not why not we go for that this is the point so uh, the, as a preparation first the if i say that the okay let's say that you are in a let's say that you are in a, in a prison prison which provides you with the swimming pool with the uh, what is that starbucks and so forth then would you be eager to run away from the prison you may not even identify that you are in prison whereas a wise person knowing that okay this is the trick this is the the part of the prison guard to build a swing pool there to build to set up the to install or set up the the starbucks and so forth this is the 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 the, the, the trick of the, the prison guard to keep me intact in the prison after one year execution right whereas if you are unaware of that if you are so infatuated by the the by the uh, by the lures in the prison the swimming pool the, the the starbucks and so forth then you will not know how one year passes by and then the next day you will get the letter saying that tomorrow is your execution day right so this is all because of what being we're being trapped by the bait of this so the point is that the we need to identify how we are actually see sometimes people say that the west is for the, the youth not for the old people like me the west is for the youth for the young people right i don't know how, how true that is but there are many westerners do you agree with this or not we don't agree because they say that say that if you don't believe in the, the greater concepts if you don't believe in bigger concepts right so they it is just so like everywhere it's like pubs and so forth it's not that everybody is bad everybody's doing the thing but the point is that this is what many people believe because for them what is life life is work hard you earn money enjoy this is what many people believe in this so what do you mean by work hard i cannot work hard with this you know the, this body already gave up to the injection of the covid vaccine <laughs> with the covid vaccine you know i only earlier you should think that i'm young and with the covid vaccine no reaction the young people they they had such a reaction of you know, two days the fever, then had the, the joint pain, so far. I don't have any pain. Then I realized that it's because of my strength of the body. No, the body surrendered. <laughs> Already 55 years old, the body surrendered. You're getting it? So with this body surrendering to into this 
the COVID vaccine, I can't imagine that myself working so hard like this, like, you know, to earn money like this. No. So whereas the young people can. So this is why many people think that they say the some of the cultures, they are more like the culture for the youth. Okay, so whatever is the case, that the point is that it is, there's a great purpose in reflecting on the these things. Only when you reflect on the severity, severity of the problems of the life, then you'll realize the benefit of existing or or transcending the sorrows. You will value that. Okay. So with this in mind, um, the reflecting on impermanence, the gross and subtle, the gross one already dealt with. Now the subtle one, subtle one is that um, the um, what is the impermanent phenomenon? Any impermanent phenomenon, say the having involved, having involved transitoriness, transitoriness, momentariness, momentariness involved. That momentariness of the impermanent phenomena is known as subtle impermanence. Momentariness, be it your hand, be it the pillar, be it the tree, be it something, be it say the all composite phenomena. They should composite phenomena should necessarily have the transitoriness or the momentariness involved there. When so you look at this, for example, say the momentariness meaning. Let's say uh, the, we are together here to something that uh, is some beautiful place here. And uh, Venerable Samala says that we'll have, um, okay, the, the we will plant, uh, we'll plant an what? Apple tree. Oh, yeah. Okay, we, 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 we will plant, we'll plant an apple tree in a place where there is no apple tree today. We we'll plant it today. And after 10 years, we come back, which is 20, 32. 2032, we come back. We come back, and all of you said, Oh, earlier 10 years ago, there was no tree here. How come there's beautiful, such a beautiful a 10 feet tall tree there? So, this 10 feet tall tree, you think that it was non existent before, that was 10 years ago. And then, is it that the, the, uh, is it that the last 9 years and 11 months, the sapling that you planted remained slipping? And suddenly, oh, tomorrow completes 10 years, so I have to grow 10 feet tall. No. Every year it was growing one foot. Every year there was one foot. And the, the first year, one foot tall sapling. Again, he said that 11 months, the last 11 months he was sleeping. I said, oh, tomorrow completes the one year, I have to pop up one, one foot. No. Every month it was growing one inch. Every month. 12 months, 12 inches. Okay, so they, which means that month by month it was changing. Although we look at the tree and we see so like so static. If you don't believe, look at this pillar. How does this pillar appear to you? Changing, moving like this, <laughs> or so static? How does it appear to you? So static. This is how our senses are deceived. Our senses are deceived. In reality, look at this tree. 10 feet tall tree, it seems so gigantic, static, in actuality, it has been growing. Just think logically, think logically, this is so powerful. Therefore, the Buddha's teachings are grounded on the logical thinking. See, every year it was growing one, one foot, and every month it was growing one inch. So this change that you see over the span of 10 years is possible only if the change was happening of the year by year, year by year, yearly, the change was happening. This change, yearly change is happening only, the, the possible, only if there's a, the change is happening on the monthly basis. You agree? And the change that you see in the monthly basis is possible only if there's a change happening on the weekly basis, daily basis, right? And then the hourly basis, and minute by minute basis, second by second basis, right? Okay, say the, the Say if you look at the, the wall clock, wall clock, do you see the, the minute hand moving? You just keep looking at you see the minute hand moving, you would not see that moving. The second hand moving? Yes, you can see it. So the even this tree which seems to be so static, it's not actually static, it's moving at the, the second by second level. 
to see that this change is happening on the on the minute by minute level possible only if there's a change happening on the second by second level this change on the second by second level is possible only if there's a change happening on the millisecond level a millisecond level changes happen are possible only if there's a change happening on the nanosecond level you're getting it so you can keep going like this we see that then all the composite things including this tree they are moving so fast this is how it moves so fast in fact it seems as so static this is illusion this is optical illusion that we're going through and likewise look at your body is it changing or not changing if you literally see, if you see this your hand your whole body changing momentarily is very scary right very scary and um, so what do you feel you look at your picture photograph of 10 years ago and today huh? what do you feel you feel that I'm I've aged a lot you're getting it okay so they, you do you don't see this change but this change is invariable invariably happening so if you can see this change on this the, the millisecond level like this is very scary and therefore what I may suggest to you and to myself as well that the if we can sometimes we can take like two days three days four days some of you who have you let's say like your time in your hands to see for retreat just on impermanence and the suffering retreat on this and um, whatever commitments that you have like sadhana and so forth you can do that meanwhile the focus should be on the meditation impermanence just on impermanence cross impermanence subtle impermanence then the all contaminated things are suffering nature just on these two lines if you could meditate and if say do this effort the, the retreat if you start to feel at the a tinge of a fear in your mind that all these things they're moving so fast like this uh, this is mark of the success this is the time this is it is for this reason that the Buddha taught that the merit of all the footprints, the footprint of the, the elephant is the supreme, and of all the meditations, meditation on impermanence is the supreme. <clears throat> okay, um, what do you think? What made the Buddha, or why the Buddha taught that the meditation on impermanence is supreme? Why? Anyone? Because it helps you to realize it. So it helps you realize emptiness, which means meditation emptiness is more supreme. Yeah. So the meditation on the impermanence is not the supreme. There's something more supreme than that. Okay, no more. Good attempt. Yes, over there. To reduce clinging. Yes, the, to reduce clinging. Um, meditation, meditation on emptiness also re reduces thinking greatly okay anybody any yes and the emptiness also always there with us anyone else okay i'll be changing to understand reality so you do you need to understand impermanence Okay, good. Thank you. There. Say it again. So, what is your standpoint? It is not the supreme meditation, is what you're saying? It is. So, by but let us keep in mind that simply by meditating on impermanence all the time it will not take you to nirvana okay this is why i'm asking if it's so simple i would not ask this question to you okay i said what is important 
listen to all of us we have this problem say the problem of procrastination right how many had that problem presents some of us we, we even don't know what is procrastination <laughs> but I'm procrastinating or not I'm not too sure right okay some the let's say that the um, say that how important it is. Let's say that if there's a snake somewhere outside, right? Then the I would say that the okay, Raviji, there's a snake there, right? Please would you mind removing it? And if the or if the snake is right here, right? Shall I say, oh, there's a snake here? Oh, what will I do? Huh? I'll jump, right? When outside, I'll not jump. Here, I'll jump. Why? By the time I say, Raviji, there's a snake here, it will bite me, right? But keep in mind that snakes don't, they don't bite us. They are afraid themselves. So if we stay, Calm, confident, the snake will go on its own way. Right? We just created the kind of our own supposition that the snakes are so angry by nature, the moment they see you, they attack you. No, that's not the case. They are afraid of the human beings. Right? If you don't harm them, just stay there, don't shout, stay there calm, the snake will go in its own way. Yeah. Okay. Um, so the point is that here, the sense of urgency comes. So by meditating impermanence, sense of urgency comes. With sense of urgency, then you will work so hard to meditate on emptiness, the liberating path, the bodhicitta, with the renunciation. Your meditation will become very efficient. So therefore, the Buddha, it is said that the, the first teaching the Buddha gave is the teaching on impermanence, and the last teaching the Buddha gave is also teaching on impermanence. Let's not forget it. Okay. Um, so this is the, the all composite things impermanent. And if you meditate on this, the reasoning that I gave you, say like, okay, this hand, this hand, Say I saw the some of you already know that my hands. So when I was seven years old, I so so well remember that I was so fascinated by the 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 wonder of the, the what the tenderness of the complexity, the what the, the complexion of my hands. So beautiful, so cute. <laughs> when I was seven years old, and today I look at it, it's no more cute. <laughs> so which means that it has undergone this change. This change. And if you look at this change, when did it happen? Did it happen yesterday? When? So this is how, if you reflect on this, this change, it was much nicer than this 10 years ago. Even better, 20 years ago. Still better, 30 years ago. Which means that every year it, was, it is becoming worse. Every year. So this change is possible. 50 years of change is possible only if there's a change happening on the annual basis. And then you make this time, uh, the time range, smaller, smaller, smaller. The say change happening on the annual basis is possible only if there's change happening on a monthly basis. And monthly, just look at the, say, the, uh, the, the four seasons, for example, here. We have four seasons, four seasons, and the autumn comes, then the chill, you know, comes, you feel, okay, now this, the, the spring, summer, gone, autumn, then the winter comes, autumn gone. So every time there's a the change in the season happens, they, if you are someone who reflects on these in, in impermanence, you will get a feeling of little uneasiness within you, leading a feeling of nostalgia, feeling of the say, missing something, feeling of you becoming older. Whereas for some people, okay, now autumn, 
Well, no, we look forward to the, the winter. We look forward to the, the spring. Happy birthday, right? What is happy birthday? One year older. This is reality, right? And if I say that, okay, we are celebrating that you're one year older, nobody will be happy, right? <laughs> it's a birthday, you feel happy. It's just a self-deception. It's a self-deception. We have to accept the reality. Accept the reality, you become strong. It helps us to become strong. So this is how we reflect on, on impermanence. The monthly basis, weekly basis, the change happens on weekly basis, the change happens. It's just a matter of thinking. You keep thinking like this, known as analytical meditation. You keep thinking like this, then gradually your mind can digest the change that is happening on the, the on the say the <clears throat> on the weekly basis, daily basis, hourly basis. Then what? Minute by minute basis, second by second basis, and then you can go even subtler, even subtler, millisecond, nanosecond, and so forth. Actually, nanosecond is not really necessary. By the, you, by the time you reach the level where you are able to see the on a second by second basis, the change is happening, then the millisecond change is happening, that's good enough. It will give you a, a great sense of urgency within you. A great sense of urgency. <clears throat> there was when I, when I was, I think, 20 or 21 years old, I said for like two months retreat, just on impermanence and the uh, the, the suffering because there, there was no choice. No exposed. I was not really exposed to emptiness. No exposed to bodhicitta because of which there is no choice other than to meditate on these two things. And my teacher, when I am in the I sought his advice. What what should I meditate? He said Med meditate on the impermanence and suffering. And then I was just doing that. In the so usually these experiences are not to be shared. You have to be kept for yourself, kept for yourself, and the the uh, kept for yourself because that you, if you share these experiences, then the the tendency for the for us the ordinary beings the tendency that that our ego negative thoughts can creep in and it will destroy your the the effects of your the practices. But for for now we see there are many youngsters, so to inspire the people. That is something that we can do. If you do, you can feel the benefit. So, for that matter, I'm sharing this, not for any other reasons. Okay. So, if you meditate on this, if you succeed in this meditation, the properly, and of course, they with the help of the other books as well, the books of Lumbrim, There, you can see uh, the dimension of the impermanence. And there's no such, you know, steps, step one, step two, step three, no. You have to uh, so somehow design your own practice. But the main clue, as I said earlier, so you reduce the time span of the growth that you see, the change that you see in a yearly basis, or the 10 years, um, the, what you, the change that you see in 10 years, you try to see that it's only possible if the change is happening on the yearly basis. You reduce from 10 years to one year. One year to one month, one month to one week, one week to one hour, one hour to one minute, one minute to one second, one second to one millisecond. This is how we reduce the, the, the time range. And then, otherwise, if you jump directly to the one millisecond, our mind will not work at all like this. Our mind has to be trained gradually, gradually. Okay, so this is how we measure impermanence. And uh, the meditation permits, of course, it is a tremendous benefit that the uh, a sense of urgency will come come to us. And with a sense of urgency, then we will not um, the procrastination stops. Procrastination stops, and whatever we do, practice that we do, will become very effective. Okay, what's next? Hey, what's the second C here? Huh? All, contaminated All contaminated things are suffering nature. Just okay. Let us imagine that we have practiced the the wisdom of emptiness, no, the wisdom of impermanence. So with this, we have come to realize that if all the composite phenomena they are like 
momentarily moving so fast. So actually, if you manage it, and the, if your meditation goes successfully, then you will literally feel like all these the, the, the sort of material things. Mind, not sure, because the mind requires more skills. With the material things which we can readily see. So you can see them as move so fast, like this. Very scary though, very scary. Um, the, you reach the point. If you succeed in this, your practice will become really, very meaningful. Okay. Um, so now imagine that we have all realized this, that all composite things, the impression that we, we get is that all these composite things, they move so fast, like the, like the vibrations, like it's like this how they move. If there's a case, then you get a feeling that the, the kind of, the, you, of course you'd get this a fear. And the fear, if you do get it, and uh, the if it's acutely, acutely strong, you cannot bear it, then stop the meditation for some time. Because it can, if you, if you, if it's not complemented by the support of merit, <clears throat> it can make you go into a little bit of depression. But this happens to one out of one million. Don't worry about it, right? Practice it. If you do, whenever you get time, practice it. It's not necessary that, okay, I will do it only when I get, when I'm retired. Don't wait till that point. Right? Even if it's just like two day on the long weekend, two day, two days, three days, just say, okay, now this is, I'm going to sit for a retreat on impermanence, on impermanence and suffering nature, the first two series of Buddhist teachings. And then you cut off yourself, you can inform your friends, friends meaning people who are really very close to you, just inform them this is what I'm doing, and then the I will close my mobile. Okay, this is how we do. And then you uh, sit for your retreat. Yeah, start a little early, go to bed early, and for two, three days. But don't expect that you will have some medical power in two, three days. Nothing will happen, right? In fact, the you may feel demoralized, saying that, what to what? practice did I, did I do for the last two days? Two days simply finish. This is how we have to go. Gradually we become more and more experienced and then you'll be able to design your uh, the, the timing properly where you'll have a, the time management, uh, proper time management, all these things will happen eventually. But you have to begin somewhere. Okay, so imagine that we reach to that level where we, we have realized that the, all the composite things, they move so fast, like a fast moving train. And imagine that if you, somebody, I say unknown person, a stranger, picks you up on the, from the platform, the train platform, and then you're thrown into a very fast moving train. What do you, what do you feel? What will you feel? The fear. Why fear? You don't know where this train is taking you. You cannot jump. It's a very fast moving train. So look at, so when you realize that your body is moving so fast, it's changing so fast, and the whole world, whole universe is moving so fast, it is like, it's not like you are thrown into a very fast moving train. Faster the train moves, the more the fear. So who decides where this train is taking you? Who decides where this train is taking you? train conductor or the train driver decides and imagine that if the train driver is your mother then the train will take you to a picnic spot but if the train driver is your is a terrorist it will take you to a slaughterhouse right so in our case the train train driver is none other than your own mind your mind is the train driver and this mind unfortunately although it is not the terrorist but the mind is under the terrorist of the two worst contaminations. Self-grasping ignorance and self-centered attitude. The two terrorists. Self-grasping ignorance and self-centered attitude. And our job is over the next few days, 
We need to know the distinction between the self-grasping ignorance and self-centered attitude. The distinction, these two are not the same, these two are different. We need to make the distinction between these two things so well. And these two are the these two are the, the two things that exist within us. And if you want to know, how do we know that I have these two things, these two demons within us? Let me quickly tell you and use evaluate whether it's true or not, or whether you have it or not. The first, what's the first one? <clears throat> self-centered, self-grasping ignorance. What is self-grasping ignorance? Let's say that, uh, you, you say, you watch a movie, in a movie theater, and uh, the, say, a ghost movie, it is a ghost movie, you are watching a ghost movie. Now, particularly when you are very young, age two, age three, you're so scared and what do you, you cover your head, right? Okay, when you're older, most likely you will not cover your head. You know that it's coming from the projector. The movie's coming from the projector. You're getting it? Okay, now you pick up something. Whatever you have on your table, just pick up something and look at it, look at it. Do you see, does the object appear to you like a movie being projected by your mind or independent of your mind, it appears as independent of your mind. How does the object appear to you? Huh? Independent of your mind. This is known as self-grasping. Grasping the object as objectively real. This is self-grasping. Don't worry, we're going to study more on this. If you have this, the demon of the self-grasping ignorance is already within you. You're getting it? Self-grasping ignorance is there. Now, what is the second one? Self-centered attitude. Self-centered attitude. Okay, let's say that let's say that we're all extremely, extremely, extremely thirsty under scorching sun. Extremely thirsty. Acutely thirsty. Okay, how many of you had that experience of acute thirst? Resent? Just craving to have water. Resent? Okay. Um, the, so there, somebody says, okay, who likes to have this? I have only one glass of water and only I will give it to only one person, not to, not to be shared with anybody. Just one person. Who likes to have it? Huh? I will have it. That is self-centered attitude. That is self-centered attitude. You're getting it? And uh, the uh, some of you might not have that experience. Some of you might say, no, what's the problem? I give it to somebody else. Which means you have no experience of the acute thirst. Acute hunger. Acute thirst. They are terribly, terribly painful. So they, I need to have it. If that comes, self-centered attitude is acting on you. So these two demons are already within us. Oftentimes people come for these retreats and then they, you know, yeah, they're successful. They get some kind of understanding that, okay, now I have to use my life very meaningfully. So from this, after this, I'll go to Himalaya for, you know, meditation. So where you, you know, I'll leave everything behind. So when you go, self-grasping, self-centered, you also come with you. <laughs> right. So these are the two, two things which are create problem to us, right? Your car doesn't create problem. Your good food doesn't create problem. Your, your good house doesn't create problem. It's the two two things inside us: self-grasping, ignorance, self-centered attitude. These two things are the ones which create problem to us. So. And you want to leave everything and you want to go to Himalaya. So like the moment you go to Himalaya, you become you attain nirvana. You know, self-grasping, self-grasping ignorance and self-centered attitude, this will also come with you, right? Support you to come to Himalaya. They will also come to you. Okay, so these are two demons. Where your mind is contaminated by these two demons, you will never be happy. It will take you to the slaughterhouse. This is the meaning of all contaminated things are of suffering nature. Contaminated meaning all, so for that, contaminated. What contaminates and what is contaminated. 
So what contaminates is the self-grasping ignorance, self -grasping, primarily self-grasping ignorance, and self-centered attitude is the one which complements, which complements uh, to make this self-grasping ignorance active to give rise to the miseries. So primarily self-grasping ignorance. So contamin uh, what contaminates are the contaminations. What are the contaminations? All afflictions are the contaminations. Afflictions and contaminations, these two are synonymous. So we talk about the contaminated karma, karma which are influenced by the afflictions. So contaminated, contaminated has con the, the, the word contaminates, the contaminations contaminate. What are the contaminations? Afflictions. Okay. So where our mind is under the dictate of the contaminations, or under the, the under the dictate of the afflictions, we will never have a peace of mind. We'll only have miseries. All contaminated things are of suffering nature, and the suffering like what? Suffering like what? How many of you had, at least in your life, at least once in one time in your life, as a very severe, severe suffering, acute suffering resents? Okay, what is what does it mean by acute suffering? I don't know. Resents? You don't know what suffering is? Okay, okay. Resents those who have no idea what is acute suffering. Okay, Angela, Tenzin Angela, and who else? Okay, your name? Rizina, Yundela, acute suffering? No. Okay, the Inzela? No. Okay, then the um, here, Chazumla. No. Okay, physicist. No. Okay, so the younger ones don't worry. There are so many, you know, acute pains waiting for you. <laughs> right. Yeah, the acute pains are waiting for us. Okay. The younger ones. The uh, the. The fact that they are yet to encounter the life, um, oftentimes you will understand that my mobile, today I don't know how it came to work here, usually I don't keep it the thing with me outside here in this campus because the same it is advice that sometimes the mobile we are not being too discreet and we just continue to disturb your roommates. And everybody came here, not for you know the holiday and so forth. They came here for you know some studies, reflection, meditation, and they expected to come early morning. And uh, then the you know the late night you keep talking, and your the roommate is being disturbed. So that way, let us be very sensitive. Let us be very compassionate to your roommate and to the respective environment also. So therefore, I don't know how it came today. Usually, to keep my the the timing, there's a clock there, but I have to watch here. I don't know how it came. Uh, the thing is that this is the one thing that I request. The request actually came from the administration, and I fully respect that. That uh, uh, please uh, the same whatever the rule set the of the retreat. Um, let's all respect that. Okay. Um, what am I saying? Okay. Someday, um, say, young boys and girls who I know from schools, if you are yet to join college, if you call me, no matter how urgent I am, I'll pick up the phone. Because you don't know what is suffering. You're getting it? And for them, a small, a small problem is a huge problem, right? It can really give them, if I don't pick up the phone, they, it may give them heart attack. What happened, right? He's not picking up my, picking up my phone. Whereas if you're in college, 
I'll not pick up the phone. Particularly when I'm in busy, I'll not pick up the phone. But you understand it. You have seen the world a little bit. But the young ones, they really, they don't, they have seen the world. They need support. They're now coming out. They're bound to face the, the real life. Real life is very painful. So we are there to support them. At least let them settle in this world of suffering. To let them know that the, the world is not that easy. It's not that beautiful as how it used to be when on the school days. Okay, for that matter, when the say those in uh, the school before they join the college, particularly that transition period, when they call me, I pick up. No matter what, I pick up. To even they say, during this time, if I <laughs> receive a call, right? Somebody they during passing through this transition period, for them the they will feel as well like you. They are dejected. They're being dejected, you know, they, their life is so meaningless and hopeless. Whereas when you go to the college, university, then you become more settled, you see the reality more closely, and you are not easily affected by the, the external factors. Okay. The, and what kind of suffering? If I ask you this, the suffering is very really painful, to be very honest. Life is not that easy. And the, um, we put on the facade, one facade. When you go out, we put on nice, you know, we tidy ourselves, right? And then we put on a different facade. Whereas at home, we are very different. So we have so much a problem. So what I tell, tell people is that don't think that you are the only person. This whole world, everybody is suffering. This is reality. Everybody is suffering. We should know this reality. Everybody is suffering. And what kind of suffering? Sickness is terrible. COVID-19, for example, COVID-19 sickness is extremely, extremely, extremely scary. And they say, sometimes my friends, they said, oh, there is particularly the Delta, the, the, the COVID, the Delta variant. So the end, somebody said, yes. So what do you do? So, Gishala, can you send somebody to take care of that? How can I tell somebody to risk your life? Right? So, this person is also a human being um, who doesn't want to, to die. So, they, so, we should be very realistic. So, what I'm saying is that the everybody everybody's going through tough times, difficult times. And the, the difficulties, the pains that we go through, if you think about these, is acutely, acutely painful. For example, that the pain of losing near and dear ones. And so the whole life shatters. The whole life is meaningful, the meaningless, is totally gloomy and totally meaningless. This is what we feel. And how many of you have felt that in your life? Raise your hands. How many felt that life is so life is shattered altogether? And you feel totally the, the meaninglessness. The whole, as the whole life is so hollow, meaningless, resents, sometimes it helps, you know, we feel like, yes, of course. And the, keep that in mind, everybody's going through this. And if not been through this yet, but I've been through this since I was five. Since I was five. At five, I lost my mother. That simply shattered everything of this young boy. Okay, so what I'm saying is that the, these things, we are bound to go through these problems one way or the other. And to wish be very uh, the realistic. And the, the, the problems that we went through, that we are going through, we are bound to go through. Um, and yes, of course, many, I'm sure many of you have been through the same thing when I was very young. Said so that at five, I lost my mother. And then when I was like, Seven, eight, nine, when I was with my father, when sometimes he would take a nap, just sitting like this, a nap, then I would have a sense of fear that whether he's alive or not, I would touch his heart to see if, it, if he's still breathing. So how many did that? I'm sure you must have done that to your parents, yes, over the year, yes, yes, yes. So this is where, as small children, as small children, you are actually going through a very panicky state. 
to imagine the, the, to lose somebody who you love so much, like your dad, your mom, it's hugely painful for you. And this is what most of us have been through. Okay, so they say, if you think of that, sickness, aging, death, tension, depression, anxiety, anguish, so we, and the bewilderment, confusion in life. So if you think of these, in fact, at times, one such moment is good enough to nullify the all the past memories of merriments, celebrations, festivities, birthday party, the party celebrations, and so forth. Everything will just be nullified. All the experience of the past will be nullified by one moment of the tragedy that we face with. If you think like this, then we see that I should be more realistic. I should not be carried away by, for example, I have acute pain here, somebody gives me a chocolate, then I just forget this pain. We should not behave like this. We should not behave like a small child. We should not forget the past experiences of the pains. And if, yet, it doesn't mean that we have to just think of the, you should be bogged down by the pains. No. Think about the pains and see how to get away from this pain. This is a wise person's approach. See how to get away from these pains. That is so important. I reflect on these pains and this will make us more grounded in our life. Otherwise, when you don't see the, the real ground reality, we're just fascinated by small, small, small things. Just, you know, okay, no, I don't like this food. It, you know, it has the word. The, uh, the, I don't like it. If this is the attitude, we are yet to see the reality. If you see the reality, so a person who has really experienced life will never behave like this. So that person, anything, the, the, the person can adjust with any situation. So therefore, to think about the real life is so important. All contaminated things are suffering nature. And say today we are all very fortunate that some of you may have come, uh, say, the, with some financial support from your parents, from your friends, from your whatever, from your the the life, from your earnings and so forth. Um, so somehow we came here, but there are so many people who have to think of where am I going to get the next meal, from where I'm going to get the next meal, and don't think that these are unfortunate people. I'm the very fortunate people. No, we never know. The, the next time we will end up in, the, in this situation ourselves. We never know. We talk, say, the, the, the people in the hands of the terrorists. Nobody said that, okay, I'm so excited I'm going to the terrorist hands. No. But somehow they come in the hands of terrorists. We never know that we, we will be the, the next person. We never know. Simply because that we are safe today doesn't mean that we forever will be safe. Well, we can't be in the hands of the terrorists. We never know that. So, what I'm saying is that if you think about these realities more closely, then you'll become more grounded. And most importantly, not just for you to feel to feel to be grounded, but to think of how to how to transcend all these uh, the problems altogether. How to transcend altogether? How to transcend your miseries? This is the, the, the purpose why we are reflecting on this, this suffering. Okay, all contaminated things are suffering nature. So we think about the suffering nature and how the contaminations that self-grasping, ignorant, self-centered attitude, these to create the, uh, the, say, the miseries. And I'm sure you have many questions on what is self-grasping, ignorance, what is self-centered attitude, how do you distinguish these two things? And um, I want somebody to to remind me later. Who's going to volunteer to remind me? Yes, here. <coughs> At least two. I need two. Okay, one there. Okay, so we have two of them. Raise hands. So everybody can see two of you. So that I'll not be responsible. <coughs> okay, good. Uh, what is the question? Two of you. <laughs> Very good. What is self grasping ignorance? What is self centered attitude? How these two are different? Okay. And um, then, yes, of course. 
How many you seriously think that the life there's so many miseries? Reasons. How many seriously think it's a little complicated? Life is very complicated. The miseries. Reasons. Okay. And those, among those who raise your hands, uh, they raise your hand again if you are very serious with it. <laughs> if you are very serious. Okay. And how many of you don't want to have this misery reasons? How many don't want to have this misery reasons? And how many of you are serious with the reasons? <coughs> okay. If you are very serious, then you have to go for the number three. The question is, whether or not that is the solution to this problem. Whether or not, what we have reflected the, thus far, say all composite things are impermanent, all contaminated things are suffering nature. Yes, that's very true. Composite things are impermanent. And not only impermanent, that my body moves so fast. And I don't want to see my body changing. I don't want to see my body becoming older. I don't want, want to see the, the whole world going to the next phase and we all get into this world. I don't want to see this happen, but it's happening. But it's happening. We cannot stop it. And not only that, the change is happening. The change gives rise to miseries. Because contaminated things are of suffering nature. Miseries. How to stop it? Is the question. Right? And if you're very serious with this, how to stop it? And this is the time to reflect on the point number three. So, um, say, how to stop these miseries? Anyone? How to stop these miseries? Meditation. Huh? Meditation. Meditation. Um, like what? Like uh, calm abiding. Okay, calm abiding meditation where your mind is very calm, peaceful. Right? Mm -hmm. And 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 vipassana. Vipassana. What is vipassana? Sensation, analyzing the sensations, observing the breath. Okay, anyone else? Yes. Remove the two obscurations. Very good. So now, your name? Tam. Tam is banking what we learned. It's so precious. Let's not forget it. See, the, of course, you're going to give your own answers. At the same time, whatever we have learned, just see. If you can extract information from there, what you learn, there will be. This is where we are applying what we have what we learned into your analysis. This is so precious. Thank you. So by removing the mental dirt, the true nature of mind is totally fearless and with infinite expanse of happiness. And this is what we are seeking. Was the opposite of the fearlessness, the fears. We don't want to encounter the fear. Your true, the true nature of mind is fearless in nature. Why you feel the fear? Because then it is that fearless nature is obscured by the metal defilements. <coughs> Remove the metal defilements, the two obscurations. That makes total sense. Wonderful. Okay. Do, do you remember this mantra? Ye Dharma Hetu Kripala. We were sat it like two years ago. <laughs> huh? We were sat it two years ago, three years ago. When we last met? Huh? You remember? When did we recite this mantra? Om ye dharma hetu prabhava. Huh? An hour. This morning? An hour. Yesterday? An hour ago? Two hours ago? Okay. See, the mantra reads Ye dharma hetu prabhava. All these phenomena arise from causes. You're getting it? So, since that we don't want these miseries, how to stop the miseries? Is by stopping the causes of the miseries. Okay, this is very important. This is very important. Um, like oftentimes, this is what I. This is the. This is where I seek advice from people. So today also I will seek your advice. Um, I live in Delhi. And some part of this, some part of my sharing, is true. Some part I just create. Create as a scenario, create a scenario which may not be reality. Say, I live in Delhi and I live in a building, that third floor, third floor. And um, in the month of May, June, particularly May, June, yeah, May, June, the weather is extremely dry. 
and on my house um, the, say since May, June I started to have asthma problem this is not a reality I'm going to a story okay I have asthma problem and this asthma problem is related to the moisture in my house moisture in my house little dampness in my house so I don't want to go through this as a problem. What advice would will you give me? Anyone, raise hands. What advice would you give me? I don't want to go through. I don't want to continue with this as a problem, right? And the the how I contracted this asthma, I told you. I live on the third floor, Delhi, May June. The weather is so dry, and the third floor, and the because of the, I developed this asthma problem because of a little bit of dampness there in the house. And uh, yeah, so what advice would you give me? I don't want to stay with this asthma any longer. Raise hands, raise hands, raise hands, raise hands, raise hands. <coughs> okay, Maria, no, no advice? Uh, no advice. Okay, here. Change your environment. Change your environment, which means change my house. <coughs> Yeah, this is what I'm saying. As well, meaning move your house. This is what I say. Change the house. I have so many books. Very heavy. Third floor going down. Right? Okay. Practice detachment and move house. Practice detachment and move house. Practice detachment, detachment the books. Detach from your brains. Right? Detach from learning. Yeah. Detach from learning. <laughs> okay. Detach from Nirvana, Buddhahood. <laughs> this is not wise advice. Here. Yeah. Keep the fan on, turn on the Keep the fan on. Keep the fan on. Yes, over there. Buy a humidifier. Uh, buy, not humidifier, dehumidifier. <laughs> yeah, humidifier will make it more humid. <laughs> yeah. So they, I should buy dehumidifier. Yes, it's quite expensive. Uh, yeah, it's quite expensive, and also that I have to say once it is say the um, is a little damaged, I can have to call the technician. The technician will say that I'll come tomorrow. I'll come tomorrow. I'll come tomorrow. <laughs> right? This is a problem. The windows open. Open the windows. Mosquitoes come. But if the weather is dry, then you won't have mosquitoes. Exactly, but I'm not telling lies. <laughs> you are in a way you are telling me that you are you are telling lies. How come there's a mosquito there? It's so whether you said the weather is dry. Okay, here. I say to repair the house. Okay, repair the house, clean the walls, <laughs> clean the walls, repair the house. Delhi is very expensive. No, <laughs> huh? you have to do it. Somehow you have to do something, right? You have to do something. But this is, it's not about expensive, not expensive. You have to do something. If you don't want this, otherwise you live with the. Asthma. Okay. Anyone else? Here. Go to a good doctor. Go to a good doctor. Right. <laughs> so two doctors there. Here. Find what is causing the humidity. Okay. Find what is causing the humidity. Okay. I never thought about it. <laughs> okay. Angela. Find the causes that create humidity. Find the cause of the humidity. Okay. That's interesting. Mm. Okay, so Ninja, he knows me so well from how many years now? Four, five years? Five years. So Ninja, like, he said, like, don't worry, don't listen to all these people, right? No need to change your room, uh, and no need to what, repaint the house, <laughs> no need to buy the with the fire, no need to open the window and, and welcome the mosquitoes, no need, right? I'll come. So he comes, Ninja, like, he comes, yes, Ninja. It's just a Say it again. It's just a invention. It's not real. <laughs> 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 it's interesting. So, you're a couple of stories. It's not real. Okay. What if it is real then? In the lab. What if it is real then? What is that is true? That you're cooking your story. You know, you said it's not real. So why should I have to worry? 
<laughs> the real. Okay, that's that's you know, but, but what if it is real then what it was for the gift? Is the so Ninjala comes, then he will say that okay, Gishila, every morning you, you used to recite mantra. What is that mantra? Ye Dharma Hitu Prabhupada. All these phenomena arise from causes. There's dampness, there must be reason in the air. It's very hot, very dry weather. There's no reason why there should be dampness otherwise. There must be reason in the air. And it is not the ground floor, it's the third floor. Ground floor from the ground, the water can come. But the third floor means it cannot come from the down. There must be reason in the air. And Ye Dharma Hitu Prabhupada. Don't forget this mantra, Ye Dharma Hitu Prabhupada. So, he would check the pipelines, water pipelines, and he's, he saw on um, what? Leakage the air. <clears throat> A little fracture there, and from there, very tiny leakage is happening, unseen, but leakage is happening there. That is spreading the, the, the water, water droplets in the air. Okay, so what Ninjala did is that instead of the 20,000 dehumidifier, fire, he went to buy a 10 rupees glue. 10 rupees glue. And wipe it clean and then put the glue there, 10 rupees glue there, and everything stop. I don't have to take all the books down. I don't have to detach myself from the run with the hood. I don't have to buy the, let's say, dehumidifier. I don't have to, you know, say, the, receive this gold from somebody else. You're telling lies. How come that is, you know, it's damp, right? It's a hot weather, it's a dry weather, right? So, and I don't have to go to hospital. <laughs> right. Okay, so look, if you track the cause, if you track the cause, fix it, your problems, you will, this is meaning of transcending sorrow. You transcend sorrow by transcending the cause of the sorrow. So this is what should be done. One point, uh, one say I was I visited the I was invited to a center to give a teaching. I, I met a young gentleman, and uh, the he was um, the he was sharing with me about you know his problems. He said that he has some uh, the he is on antidepressants, which means that he has some what is that stress anxiety problem. And he's one ended. I felt a little uh, sympathetic, and I listened to his stories. And then he said that the. And then I asked actually. I asked him, "What could be the reason that uh, the you had to depend on this antidepressant?" He said that he is working in a corporate, <clears throat> and his boss is not fair, and his boss is it always unfair. And uh, the, his juniors are given promotion and he's never given promotion. So then I said that if that is a case, case, please don't take the antidepressants. I told him. Because any, by taking the antidepressants, it will not, not change the mind of your boss. The cause continues to remain. The cause of being biased towards you or being you know, unfair towards you continues as the course continues on the your the the what anxiety depression stress they will continue to be there continue to be there and then you take the antidepressants this is adding to your say the it actually numbs your whole the immunity it numbs your whole say the the biological the the functions of the, the, the body so it's not really healthy the best thing is you look for another job because antidepressants they have so much side effects it can really destroy your body so please don't do that this is what we told him so in a way the point is that the say the course till you deal with the cause of the problem you cannot get away from the problem altogether so this is what we need to uh, keep in mind so with this in mind so in order to get rid of the miseries you need to know how to get rid of the cause of miseries and what are the causes of the miseries? Anybody? What are the causes of miseries? Anyone? Self-grasping self self self-centered attitude. Very good. Okay. So primarily it is the self-grasping ignorance. Self-centered attitude is the one which complements. Which complements? This we will, of course, we will learn later. 
the difference between these two things. The root is the self-grasping ignorance. Okay. How to get rid of the self-grasping ignorance? Wisdom. Wisdom. Very good. Thank you. Okay. In this connection, I'd like to share with you one verse by Arendigarjuna. And these are all extremely important. If possible, try to remember these points. Arendigarjuna, the in his classic text known as the Mula Madhimika Karika Mula Madhimika Karika or the fundamental wisdom of the middle way fundamental wisdom of the middle way where Arindigarjuna said seizing seizing of karmas and afflictions is nirvana seizing of karmas and afflictions seizing, seizing meaning stopping Seizing karmas and afflictions is nirvana. Karmas and afflictions arise from the conceptualization of inappropriate attention. Let me repeat it. Karmas and afflictions arise from the conceptualization of inappropriate attention, which in turn arises from, which in turn arises from the elaboration of self-grasping ignorance which in turn arises from the elaboration of self-grasping ignorance. The elaboration ceases through the wisdom of emptiness. The elaboration ceases through the wisdom of emptiness. Okay. And um, is there anybody who can help me track where this is in this book? Page 116. Page 116. Okay, just turn to page 116. Okay, page 116, it is uh, the part of chapter 18, chapter 18, um, the, uh, verse number 5, seizing of karmas and afflictions, it should lead to make it is nirvana. This is little uh, translation error. A seizing of karmas and afflictions is nirvana. Karmas and afflictions arise from conceptual thought of inappropriate attention. Inappropriate attention, you put in bracket. Inappropriate attention, these, these meaning uh, the inappropriate attentions, these inappropriate attention or these inappropriate attention er arise from the mental elaboration of grasping true existence. And this elaboration of the grasping true existence ceases by the wisdom of emptiness. Okay. Here, we need to remember five points. If possible, after the class, when you go back to your respective places, make it a point that you remember these points. And in group discussion also, rather than jumping to your questions, I would highly recommend you to, uh, first of all, the, who, who is a moderator, uh, will m let others get opportunity to speak what these points are, the five points, and then the four misconceptions, the four seals, what are two obscurations, what are two goals. Make sure that everybody knows these things, everybody has these on your fingertips, and then you can go into the, the debates or more discussions. Okay, here we need to remember the five points. Uh, the five points are first, it says, seizing what comes to afflictions is nirvana. What's the opposite of nirvana? Samsara or suffering. Samsara or suffering. So, the first one is samsara. First one is samsara. Samsara is the opposite of nirvana. Then, the, this samsara is given rise to by the contaminated karmas. So, karma here is the contaminated karmas. Number two. And the contaminated karmas are given rise to by the afflictions. Number three. Afflictions are given rise to by the inappropriate attention. And you may be wondering, you may wonder as to what what is mean by inappropriate attention. Don't worry, this is all what I what I explain. Number four is inappropriate inappropriate attention. Now what is how does it arise? Inappropriate attention, it arises by dependence on the self-grasping ignorance or the elaboration of self-grasping ignorance. Okay, let me um, go through this again. The first one is 
samsara, which is opposite of nirvana. And samsara was the immediate cause of samsara, contaminated karmas. What was the immediate cause of contaminated karmas? Afflictions. And what is the immediate cause of afflictions? Inappropriate attention. What was the immediate cause of the inappropriate attention? Self-grasping ignorance. Okay, let's not forget these uh, the five points. <clears throat> the um, how many of you still feel fresh with your hands? How many still feel fresh? If I can go for another, uh, the we still have six minutes more. Total, I need another ten minutes. I want five minutes more. Okay, how many of you are fresh with your hands? Okay, I'm glad. You're all very fresh. <laughs> okay. Um, so this is so important how our miseries, our pains arise. And if you learn on the basis of how these five points move, five points, related to five points, how our miseries arise, then we gradually try to apply this to your own life and see how your miseries, each of these miseries arise, arise on the basis of these five points. You're getting it? Okay. So the the I'd like to give the example first. Imagine that the um, we are all we are all fast asleep and then you dream of having a class here in the Gumba. You're actually in your room, but you you dream of being in this uh, the what the hall, prayer hall, Gumba. And uh, then the um, what I do is that I pick this up like this. I show this to you, and you look at it. What is this? This is a dream mobile. You know me? This is a dream mobile. I'm dreaming. You're dreaming. This is a dream mobile. But you, when you look at it, you see it's a dream mobile. You see it's a mobile. Hey, you're dreaming. In your dream, you 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 dream of me. Raising this, picking this up in my hand. So what do you see? Hey. Okay, do you, in your dream, or oh, there's a dream mobile, you will say that this dream mobile, or you say there's a dream, there's a mobile there. Okay, what are you saying? If I ask you, then what's your answer? I'm saying mobile. Actually, this is a dream mobile. Don't forget it, you're dreaming it. Okay, so first is, seeing a dream mobile. Then you look at it very carefully, right? And then you ask, what mobile is that? Then Finzoli will say, it is brand new iPhone 14 Pro. <laughs> <coughs> wow. Okay. Number one, seeing a dream mobile as a real mobile, number one. Then not only is it mobile, it is done. Brand new iPhone 14 Pro. <laughs> Number two, you exaggerate the quality of the mobile. First, you misperceive the object, dream mobile, as a real mobile. Then, you misperceive the characteristic of the object. You see it as a brand new iPhone 14 Pro. You give a false characterization to the object. Number two, then what happens? I mean, I like to have it, right? Then say, Vishala, my mobile, can I get, get the, can our, the two mobiles be changed, exchanged? Then your, your neighbor says, no, 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 I said it before. Before we entered, I said, sorry, I told him, and he, he promised to, and the, have exchange with mine, right? And then two of you would have fist fight. <laughs> and fist fight, with a fist fight, police comes, take you behind bars, right? Okay, so let's say, and then the, your mom, your mom called up the office, right? What happened to my daughter? She is not coming. What happened to my son? He is not coming. All two of them, <laughs> they are in the behind bars. So your poor mother comes to the, the prison. What happened? Why do you, you, you went to what? For something, <laughs> not to go behind bars. But why you entered in bars? Why? Well, you entered in bar. Why? You entered in the prison. And prison is not a nice place. It's a samsara, right? 
Why you entered in prison? Why? You know what? Hey, why you entered in prison? Craving. Uh, craving. Oh, simply because, oh, I crave for this mobile, police will not arrest you. Right? Police will arrest you only when action takes place. Only with the fist of the police will take you. Otherwise, you can have so much of intense cream for mobile. I want to have the mobile in there. No police will take. I'll grab you. Right? Okay. So it's because of the fist fight. Fist fight is a karma. Right? So the immediate cause of you being in prison is because of the fist fight. That's karma. And why did you, why did you fight? You did not go to prison to fight. Why did you fight? Hey, tell me why? Huh? No, tell me. Tell me. What is the fight? Huh? You wanted the mobile. I wanted the mobile. I'm attached to the mobile and I am the. the but I just like this person. Right? I have the aversion towards this person and I have an attachment towards this mobile. Because of this competition, I've, I had to fight. So at this point, it was because of my attachment to the mobile and aversion to the my competitor. So these two are the afflictions. In other words, what made you fight is because of the afflictions. What made you have the container comments is because of the affliction. And why were you attached to the mobile? Why? What's your response? Hey. Huh? It's real or what? Brand new iPhone 14 Pro. It's not just a mobile. You're getting it? It's a very unique mobile. So, exaggeration of the, this known as inappropriate attention. What is inappropriate attention? This is a terminal term. This is a terminal term. In Tibetan it is Tsulmin Yiche. Tsulmin Yiche. In English, we translate it as inappropriate attention. This is a terminal term. You cannot guess what it means. It's, it has a very specific meaning. It means false characterization of the object. False characterization of the object. Exaggerating the qualities of the object. False characterization of the object or exaggerating the qualities of the object. This is inappropriate attention. Are you sure that is the mobile in the first place? What's the answer? Yes, of course. That's not a real dream mobile. This is a real mobile. Okay. Was it a real mobile or dream mobile? Dream mobile. So tell me, what, what was the root of all this problem? Chain of the problems. Seeing the dream mobile as a real mobile. You are getting it? That is the self-grasping ignorance. That is the root. Okay, now... If I'm to uh, the, uh, tell you that if you don't want to be in prison, what should you have done? Namsala, what should you have done if you don't want to be in prison? Huh? Okay, Namsala is going to do it directly. Okay, anyone, what's the immediate cause of being in the prison? Fight. Fight. You should have stopped fighting. You're getting it? What should you think? In order to stop fighting, what should you have done? not attached to the mobile and no aversion to your competitor. So not to have the attachment to the mobile, no, no the, uh, the aversion to the competitor, what should you have done? You should have stopped the inappropriate then attention. Giving a false categorization to the object should be stopped. So how should you stop that? But not seeing by not seeing the dream mobile as a real mobile. You're getting it? Okay, so if you go in the, uh, say the, if you go, causally speaking, how you end up in prison, the root is what? Ultimately, what's the root? Seeing the real mobile, dream mobile as the real mobile. That is the metaphor for the self-grasping ignorance. And if you don't want to be, if you don't want to be in this prison, then finally what should you have done? To be away from this prison, what should have done? You should not have seen the dream mobile as a real mobile. And how not to see it? How not to see the dream mobile as a real mobile? Hey! 
Huh? Louder. Don't say wake up. Wake up. You're not waking up. <laughs> wake up. That's not waking up. Wake up. <laughs> right. Okay. So if you don't want to see the dream mobile as a real mobile, what should you do? Wake up. Wake up. This is why the Buddha is revered as the fully awakened one. You're getting it? So we have to wake up. If you don't want to go through all these miseries of life, what should we do? We should wake up from the sleep of ignorance. Okay, good. Okay, um, so today we could not do antigen question and answers, it's fine. Um, for, the, uh, for the question and answers, for, no, for the group discussions, there are two, uh, two group discussions, compulsory. The last one is the mandatory word, optional. And for the, the, the first two group discussions, what I request you is go to get your tea as soon as possible and go to your group. Otherwise, you have just a sh such a short span of time. Uh, one hour, they just time flies. Okay, so they make the most of your group discussions. Okay, thank you. Oh, uh -huh.